Peyronie's disease is a condition that develops in the penis. It's basically of unknown cause, although it's thought to be related to repeated minor injuries to the penis. Now this is not usually an injury that a man would recognise, but perhaps just a little bit of movement and bending of the penis with intercourse over the years will precipitate this problem in some men. It's been known about for nearly 300 years. Francois Peyronie actually described this condition in 1743, so we have known about it for a long time, but we still don't fully understand the mechanism of it. What it leads to is uh, a lump in the penis that may distort the shape of the penis when a man has an erection. He might have some discomfort with an erection and he may in fact lose the strength of his erection, that is develop erectile dysfunction because of the condition. There's no treatment that gets rid of Peyronie's disease. It's not a condition we can, we can treat with medication, although people have tried a variety of different things over the years. So really what we're usually left with is trying to resolve the defect that the patient has. For instance, if the patient ends up with a curved penis with erection, we can do treatments that might straighten the penis. If he ends up with a curved penis and he has erectile dysfunction, we would indeed put a penile implant in because that would correct both of the problems. So it's a difficult condition for patients to deal with because we can't actually get rid of it, but we have got surgical answers for Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease is said to occur in about 5% of men, but most of those men don't know they've got the condition. The men that realise there's a problem, usually uh, the first thing they notice is that when they have an erection, there's a, a bend or an odd shape in the erection, and sometimes it's painful. So really the, the early symptoms are discomfort with the erection and a change in the shape of the penis. If they notice that, they certainly should go to their GP and be referred to a urologist because although there's no treatment that will cure the condition, there may be things we can do early to minimise how severe the condition will eventually become and therefore make the ultimate surgery more successful. So although it's not a common condition, it's certainly one that men should seek advice from their GPs for at, a, at an early stage. The length of the penis is probably one of the things most men are, are, are most worried about and the question they often ask is will they lose length with a penile implant? The simple answer is no, they won't, but unfortunately they won't recover the length that they have already lost. And, and let me explain. When a man doesn't have erections for a long time, the tissues inside the penis, the actual structure of the penis changes and it loses its elasticity, and that elasticity can't necessarily be restored. So most men that have had erectile dysfunction for a long time have indeed already lost some length particularly if they've got a condition like Peyronie's disease, which actually causes scarring inside the penis, they will lose length. When we're doing a penile implant operation, we do everything we can to give the maximum length, but unfortunately you can't put a larger implant into the penis than the penis will, will accommodate. Probably the best way for a man to judge what the penis will be like with an implant in is to stretch his penis as much as he can and measure the distance from the head of the penis back to the body on the top surface of the penis. And that approximates the length we're able to achieve with a penile implant. Nobody else would be aware that a patient had a penile implant in place. When it's deflated, the penis looks quite natural, it hangs down normally. Certainly with clothing on, no one would have any, uh, any idea that a patient had a penile implant. Even changing in the change room at the, at the golf club or at the tennis club, nobody would be aware that there was an implant. The patient's partner would not be aware that they have an implant uh, in the normal day-to-day -day situation, but obviously if they felt his scrotum, they would feel the, the pump, which is a bit like having a third testicle. But in normal day-to-day -day activities, walking around, wearing bathing costumes, etc., etc., no one else would be aware that this particular man had a penile implant. Penile implants put inside the spongy tissues of the penis. So in a normal erection, the spongy tissue is filled with blood and that's what causes the, the hardness of the penis. When we put a penile implant inside the penis, we're not removing anything from inside the penis, but we are pushing the spongy tissues to one side. In some cases, they will still work and the man will get some degree of erection himself or get an enhancement of the erection around the implant. In other cases, the spongy tissues won't work. 
So generally speaking, a man with a penile implant is in, is dependent on the implant, but he may get some degree of filling of the penis as well. A penile implant operation is an operation performed under an anaesthetic, either general anaesthetic or an epidural type anaesthetic. Uh, one of the important facets of the operation is cleaning the skin thoroughly with antiseptics to prevent infection and the patient's given antibiotics, etc. There are really two general approaches to how you put an implant in, and that is you can make an incision in the scrotum and put the implant in through the scrotum, or you can make an incision on the lower abdomen just above the penis. They're both very good approaches, and in fact I've used both of them over the years. Currently, though, I think the, uh, the new approach, which is to use a very small incision at the, on the lower abdomen, just above the penis, what we call a minimally invasive penile implant, is by far the best approach for most patients. It's an operation that takes less than 30 minutes to do. One small incision, which is about three centimetres long, all the components are put in through there. And what I find is patients get a lot less bruising and swelling, they have a lot less discomfort, they're able to return to sexual function within three or four weeks after the implant's inserted. In my experience, the best man to have a penile implant is a man who has a permanent erectile dysfunction problem that isn't going to get better, and indeed that's most men with erectile dysfunction. He also needs to be a man who's young enough to want to have regular sexual activity and want to do that for many years in the future. The problem with the other treatments we have, such as the oral medications and the injections, is that over years and years of use, we may develop other problems from them. So they're really a way of obtaining an erection which may not be suitable if you want to use them regularly for many years. So I think a man who wants to have regular, spontaneous, hard erections for the rest of his life really seriously should consider an implant because it's the only way we have of fixing the problem. Many men who are having penile implant surgery will be on other medications, perhaps for their diabetes or their high blood pressure, etc. It's important they remain on all those medications and if there's any question they should seek uh, advice from their general practitioner. The medications, however, that we are concerned about for surgery, penile implant surgery or indeed any other type of surgery, are the medications that thin the blood down. So men who are on warfarin or, or some of the other drugs like Iscover certainly need advice from their surgeon as to when they should cease those medications because they can't safely have penile implant surgery whilst they are on those medications. With a penile implant there is an anaesthetic involved and the specialist anaesthetist will talk to the patient before the procedure. Most uh, commonly it would be done under a general anaesthetic and as the operation takes less than 30 minutes that's a very safe and good form of anaesthetic for this procedure. The majority of patients would go home the day after surgery. It's potentially possible they could just be in for the day but certainly the majority would stay overnight and go home the following morning. After the operation, whilst the patient's still in hospital, uh, we're doing several things to reduce the swelling and bruising. We use ice packs applied around the area. We have a, a, a weighted uh, sandbag that rests on the wound to minimise swelling and bruising. And we also have a drain tube that uh, drains any fluid out of the scrotum. Those things all really take place over the first 12 to 18 hours in hospital. When the patient leaves hospital, they will have discomfort for a number of days. There's a little bit of individual variation between that, but in my experience, most patients would say they were uh, uncomfortable for four to five days and a little uncomfortable for up to two weeks. The great majority of patients that work in an office setting could be back sitting in an office and working within a week to 10 days, and even patients that do more manual type work could be back doing that within three weeks. Some patients are comfortable enough at three weeks to learn to inflate and deflate the implant at that time and indeed can go on and have sexual activity. But more commonly, patients would be four to five weeks before they're having sexual activity.